Welcome to the show. My name is Jeremy Poole, the host of The Moment, where we explore and celebrate the necessary transformational process you must go through to achieve a high level of success in the real estate industry. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we have my good friend, Steve Hickey. He's the owner of Meridian Build Group in Seattle, Washington. That's right. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Um, Steve, as you know, the show's called The Moment. Mm -hmm. What would you consider or characterize as being your defining moment or a defining sure. moment that uh, has allowed you to accomplish so much? You know, I kind of have two answers to that, really. I think in itself, saying that there was one moment that really defined you is kind of tough because being an entrepreneur, there's moments every day, all sure. the time that you're trying to <laughs> capture and take yeah. advantage of. Um, I think, you know, going back through times in the past where I've had a situation that has brought a large project or linked me up with a landowner that needs a builder, you could look at that and say, well, was this person lucky being myself for running into them and being able to put something together? Or was there really something going on long before that? There was a fire burning that was waiting for those moments that weren't luck, but they were something to be able to take advantage of in the moment right. that others may have ran across and couldn't put together or um, had taken a run at and failed. And so, uh, I'd say that's the first answer to that question for, for myself. Sure. If I was to take a, a situation that really was a moment and that was long before real estate actually would be uh, in my early 20s, a long time ago, I worked for Dryer's Ice Cream. Okay. And I was a sales guy there. And so we would order for a store, pick up a truck in the morning with all the product on it, take it to the store, stock the shelves and order more. And before I had started there, Dryer's was just that. They sold Dryer's Ice Cream and only that. And depending on the volume of the store, they could go to a store once or twice a week, maybe. Mm -hmm. And as they wanted to start moving more product and increasing incremental sales, they realized that they needed to get to the stores more often. If they mm -hmm. wanted to get the hot sale and get Safeway to give it to them, the deal was you had to be at the store three or four times a week to keep restocking. They couldn't do it. So they started picking up other brands to put on their trucks, other types of product that were still in the same category on the same aisle. It was a frozen novelty or ice cream or pint or something like that. And what that gave them the ability to do then was add more trucks on the road, mm -hmm. get the better ads, get their people in the stores two, three, four times a week instead of once or twice, but still holding true to their core brand, which was dryers. And so in my business, we started doing the same thing. As I got into real estate, there are projects I owned, and that's my core project. That's the project that at the end of the day, we're really trying to find more of. But we do other investors' projects and other retail projects because by doing that, it gives us the resources to do all of these projects better. Now we have more buying power with the vendors. We can have a larger management team, um, parts of our management team that other organizations may not have, like a dedicated purchasing person. Wow. Um, and it was really through that experience many years ago in seeing how they grew the ice cream business and doing it in the same way in real estate. Um, and I think that's really one of the neat things about being an entrepreneur is, you know, you, when you want to get into real estate, you talk to just real estate people sure. and whatever you want to do. But I think a lot of those uh, concepts translate to many other types of businesses. That's fantastic. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, didn't know that about you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Steve, you run a very successful business, both in the residential space and commercial construction space. And I understand that 100% of your past clients, investors, have reinvested in future projects. Mm -hmm. That is fantastic. That's incredible. Um, what element of your business or of your personality mm -hmm. of, or the organization that you've built uh, contributes to that kind of loyalty? Because that's, that's pretty, pretty impressive. Sure. So I think there's, there's a mix. Certainly a track record of success helps. You're going to need to be able to make money on a project. That's, that's going to be the first and foremost thing that's going to bring other investors back or bring that investor to come in and say, hey, I want to get into more projects. But uh, the successes aren't it. There are times when it's tough sure. and there are challenges you didn't foresee. And so I think what we have a track record, not only of uh, success is transparency, a deep understanding of the market and the willingness to run into fire and not run away from it. Um, you know, one of the questions I ask in an interview when I'm looking to hire somebody is when you're driving down the road and you see an accident, do you stop and help or do you keep going? Are you the type okay. of person who sees a challenge and says, I'm here. I'm going to help now because this person's in need of help or do you somebody who just keeps on driving and says, hey, I have somewhere to be, I have something more important sure. and pass somebody who's in a real, having real trauma at that point in time, right. having probably one of the worst days they've had in a long time. That's an extreme example, but 
I think in our business, that's the type of personality I want. Somebody who's not going to just pass it on to the next person. Right. Say, we need to solve it now. And I think it's ex extremely valuable to an investor to come in and know that that's who they have alongside with them, not only in how we manage their money, but how we try to forecast forward and solve problems as they happen and not react to them later and then try and you know, uh, pass the buck on and say, well, we didn't see this coming and it's because of this vendor or this supplier or the market or whatever it is. Sure. No matter what happens, there's something we probably could have done and should learn from wow. to prevent it from happening again. I love that. That's, that, that's, that's, that's outstanding. I can't help but to feel like there's, some, there's something with your past wanting to become a police officer, I understand. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so where do those two things parallel? Because from my perspective, like those are completely different things, but yeah. you make them sound very similar. So I think what, when I was gonna become a cop, and that was really my path, um, when I was working at Dryers, actually, that was really what I thought I'd be doing next. I was just kind of getting some time done and going to go do some schooling and then get into that. Um, I really like to run into challenges. For me, you know, I, when things are really calm and easy. You like challenges. Yeah, <laughs> I, I like things going. I, okay. I like to, you know, you come out to one of my projects out in Renton. Yeah. And we have a multitude of townhomes going in there. And at this stage in the game, we have anywhere from 30 to 50 people on there at any one time. Wow. And when I'm in the office kind of going stir crazy, I need to just relax. Sure. I go there. Huh. I don't go turn off the lights, you know, sip, yeah. sip coffee, whatever. I go there to, to calm down yeah. and get, and I feel like uh, my mind gets much more clear when things are happening. It's That's when fantastic. things aren't happening, I'm like, we got we to gotta get going, guys. <laughs> you know? it's, the day, it's the holiday, you go out and the site's quiet. I'm sure. panicking going, how, I'm why the are these same way, I think. Yeah. Yeah, you know, if there's things happening, if things are moving, I feel, I feel complete. I feel calm. I feel, I feel yeah. relaxed. Otherwise, I feel like I'm not doing what I should be doing. Yeah. That's good stuff, man. Yeah. That's fantastic. Thank you. Um, many people are looking to invest in real estate mm -hmm. and they're looking for a viable opportunity to invest in. Who, how would you characterize the ideal investor for mm -hmm. your projects? So it's going to depend on the project itself. So uh, most of what I do daily is uh, vetting deals. So an, a real estate agent or somebody who has land that wants to sell, it's going to bring in a project and present it to me uh, and say, here's, here's what we think you could do. It's probably a few stages in at that point. So okay. there's somewhat of a path laid. Okay. And that right there is gonna tell me what, what path this is gonna take from a financing standpoint, sure. um, from a management standpoint and so on. And so at that, we're gonna see what scale is this project? What is our equity situation going to be? And what kind of cash do we need to raise? And from that point, we're gonna decide, hey, we really need to go to a main lender first, and then we're gonna bring in the equity second. Okay. Do we wanna go with a partner that can really handle the whole project? Um, or do we want to bring in a multitude of people? If the project gets to a certain size, that may right. make more sense. Um, but as, as projects get more complicated, that also can dictate that path. Because okay. when you're working with one investor, that's great. When you're working with a lot, that can be helpful or it can also be chaotic. Sure. If a project is a little too multifaceted for them to be able to wrap their mind around. Absolutely. Quickly. And the next thing you know, you're, you're spending your time answering questions versus... That's right. Building. That's right. Talk to me a little bit about your ideal project. Uh, you have now a lot of experience, a lot of very large projects, some projects that are more custom builds. Mm -hmm. uh, what does Steve Hickey want to be doing more of in 2019 and why? So I think in 2019, one of our biggest pushes is going to be getting down into Pierce County. Okay. Um, love to have you. Yeah, I'd love to be <laughs> here. You know, Seattle's been great. Sure. Um, we've had a lot of successful projects out there. Beautiful yeah. office, by the way. Yeah, uh, yeah was, <laughs> Amazing office, downtown Pioneer Square, yep. rooftop, next, or r just right in the heart of it. So <laughs> yeah. I know yeah. that's going to be hard to leave. It is. And, and I, I like the city. It, it, you know, I grew up in a more rural area. I grew up in Marysville years ago, and I always wanted to go, go to the city someday. Yeah. I've had a chance to do that. I think from a long-term standpoint, getting to where we can build larger communities, more units. Okay that's going to be a lot easier to do in Pierce County than yeah. it is going to be in Seattle, especially downtown or even the outlying areas. Sure. Um, when we talk about affordable housing, however you think we got here, whatever you think the solution is, I think uh, from a pragmatic builder standpoint, getting lower cost units is, is going to be a way to, to get in there and, and create an opportunity. Love it. And that's going to be easier to do in, in Pierce County where there's more land. So is it, is, it, is it Pierce County as a whole? Is it Tacoma? Is it downtown Tacoma? Uh, I'd really like to be in Tacoma and Puyallup. Okay. Um, there may be out areas outside of that, but I'd like to be somewhere where I'm somewhat familiar. Okay. Um, in Tacoma, I feel com comfortable with, and Puyallup, I feel comfortable with. 
Lakewood South, a little harder. Uh, you got a lot more military housing down there where they already have housing provided for them. There sure. isn't much of the retail market out there. Talk to me a little bit about, um, from an investment perspective, how much capital are you currently trying to raise? Are you raising capital? And what's the format of that? So it, the projects that we have right now, we've generally been raising just the equity portion. So okay. we go in with a lender that carries uh, the main portion of it. We finance the purchase and then the construction. Then we bring in a partner who's going to bring the equity portion up front. Great. The beauty about this model is uh, when an investor works with us, we're not going to come back and have to keep asking for more money along the way. Sure. You're going to come in, write a check for a fixed amount um, that's going to go through escrow. It's not just write me a check and I promise to do to do good things. <laughs> uh, and then you're in. And then at that point, the project's taken care of throughout. And then okay. you're going to be waiting for uh, your preferred return and then a percentage of the profit of the project. Excellent. Uh, that model has worked pretty well. I think as we start getting into larger communities, we're going to transition into trying to create a fund mm -hmm. that then we use that fund to purchase projects that fit a parameter. Sure. And so we would get the investors together, pool that, go out, find properties, come back, do a vote, yep. say here's what we've, we want to go forward with. Yep. We already have the capital ready and we can go because, you know, as the market's starting to shift, I think being able to make a faster decision and, sure. a, and make, move that process faster is going to be very valuable to get a better deal. So as the market is starting to shift, is this something that excites you or that you're a little bit concerned about? I'm excited. You know, when we look at what's happened here, job market's still strong out here. Yeah. Uh, Amazon is opening new headquarters, but they're still building more here. They've already committed to another 4 million square feet. Jeez. We have jobs are still here. They're still going. I think what's happened this last year is it's been sunlight through a magnifying glass. A lot of these values that happened uh, end of 2017, beginning of 2018, were so fast. This wasn't too, this was, this was to be expected. Sure, sure. Um, but the borrowers now, if we, a lot of people think back to 10 years ago, uh, when those, a lot of the people who were buying homes then were coming in with minimum down payments, if none. The buyers that we've been selling homes to are moving from out of town. They're coming in from an uh, area like San Francisco, mm -hmm. where values are even higher. They're coming out here paying 1.5, maybe more, and thinking, geez, we're pretty much giving it away out here to yeah. give this much of a house. Sure, sure. Um, and, but that even translates down into the under $1 million uh, mm -hmm. market as well. So I don't think we're going to run into a situation where people can't keep their mortgages current right. or they can't sell. Me if they either. need out, they can get Me out. Either. Now, in, in terms of investment size, what kind of investment are, are you looking for? Mm -hmm. So we're generally going to be at an entry level of somewhere between 100 and 300,000. Okay. And then that would be for a one-off project. Uh, as we get to larger scale communities, we have projects where we're raising somewhere between one and 1 1.5. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's with the existing model where mm -hmm. we come in, they do their contribution up front, and then yep. we finance out through the rest. Great. Um, going forward, I, I, I see in 2019 raising significantly more money, in excess of $10 million. Okay. We're then going to take that and start rolling that into community-driven projects. That's awesome. That's awesome. Knowing what you know now, uh, accomplishing what you've accomplished. By the way, congratulations on your, on your new house. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Gorgeous <laughs> home. I was just there. Um, what advice would you give to your younger self? <laughs> Where to start? So, and I think it, it, every, you could ask this question every year and it probably uh, continues to evolve over time, but mm -hmm. um, be more patient. I think that's a huge one that, uh, and, and I think it's typical for a lot of entrepreneurs. You're, yeah high energy, high drive. You sure. want to go, 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 and sure. the world's never going to move as fast as you want. Right. So you can be frustrated by that or use that as an opportunity to get better at being able to analyze the opportunity and analyze the situation. Um, I think also figuring out what you're best at and what your role is um, it's it, Daniel is Wayne. huge. You know, you talk about uh, live your best life. I like that saying and, and because it's not just live the best life. Right. It's live your best life. Right. And that's different for everybody. Yes. So if that means in going and finding deals, do that. Swing in a hammer, do that. Whatever is going to be your best life, that's what you should do. And then find the market that's going to surround that. Yes. If you come out and try and figure out, well, what is, what is out there? What does everybody want? That, that's a component. But what can you do best? And then where is that market? So that sure. it's going to feel much more natural and you're going to be able to continue to go at 2 a.m., 4 a.m., those, those sleepless nights where yeah. it's a passion. It's yeah. not the stress of, oh, my gosh, what am I going to do? It's I'm up at 3 in the morning hashing some out because I can't live my life any other way. Sure, sure. It's a passion at that It's point. a passion. That's fantastic. I was watching this video just recently, and the CEO of a large company um, 
a compass actually. He says a billionaire client of his at the time asked him this question is, does it pass the shower test? And he said, the shower test? Well, I, I've never heard of the shower test. He said, basically, you're a very capable guy. You shouldn't be doing things that you don't want to. You should be only doing things that you really want to do. And, and I asked you the question is, do you think about your job? Do you think about the business that you're currently in while you're in the shower? If you don't think about your business yeah. in the shower, you're in the wrong business. Right. And yeah. I got to where I'm at is because I, I got to do the thing I wanted to do every right. single day and I became really good at it. Mm -hmm. And therefore now my net worth is excess of $1 billion. That's and great. so that's interesting for me. Cause when I first heard that, I was just like, I do think about <laughs> what I'm doing in the shower. And it's not like, oh, I have to do this and I have to do that. It's like, I get to do that. Yeah. And I think if you can find your lane, find what God gave you, sharpen that tool mm -hmm. and offer it to as, to as many people as you can in an attitude and a spirit of service, mm -hmm. then maybe you can be a Steve Hickey. <laughs> <laughs> well, Steve, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you. I super appreciate the opportunity. And thank you for watching. We'll see you again next week.